So the obvious question that you need to answer when you run for office is why am I running? Well, it seems to me there's been an unnecessary tension between the county council and the county executive's office. We went from basically what was a three-person commission to now one person makes all the decisions about how you live your life, how much taxes you should pay, and whether or not you can even leave your home. Over the years, this dysfunction has grown. It was my hope four years ago when I supported Dennis for this position that things would actually change. But unfortunately, I feel like they've gotten worse. When we hear the county attorneys complaining constantly about they don't have enough time or staff to answer all the sunshine requests that they get, you have to ask yourself this question. Why are they getting so many sunshine requests? And there's only one reason why you get sunshine requests, and that's because the citizens want to know what's going on and they feel like you're hiding behind closed doors. Folks, it shouldn't be this hard. Something's not right. Our county's been the gross recipient of tens of millions of dollars from the federal government in both CARES funding and ARPA funding. So much money that this administration does not allow the county council to be involved in the decision process. That's why we elected them. They are presented with spending bills and told, here's what you got, take it or leave it. That's not the way we should do business. Our county executive is in favor of raising your taxes. I myself would never, ever approve of increasing your taxes. We just seen what happened with that with the parks funding. It lost 75-25, and the county spent $60,000, $70,000 just to bring that to a vote. This is stuff that I would never do. The county executive does have the ability to say no. He has the power of the veto, and I would have vetoed that proposal in a heartbeat. Some have proposed a new tax to build the courthouse and jail. Here again, I say wire tax is always the first option. There's so many issues, there's so many problems. It's been almost 50 days now since our municipal prosecutor was indicted by the FBI for, quote, sexual contact while acting under the color of law. Now, maybe it's just because I have three daughters, and maybe just because I think that that's just a horrible, horrible thing for our county. But I would have came out, and I would have took a stand, I would have made a statement, I would have offered assistance to any other victims that are out there, offered a contact number, said this is not going to be allowed on my watch, because in these cases, very rarely is this a one-time occurrence. But this administration did nothing. They almost pretended like it didn't happen. These are the things that break the trust the citizens have of government. I don't believe it's government's job to tell you whether or not you're essential. I would have never mandated how you should live your life, whether or not you should shut your business. I would never close your church. I would never order you to stay home. On March 25th, 2020, there's a news story on Fox 2 News. The headline reads, Jefferson County Executive says he will go to court to enforce the stay-at-home order. That is so wrong. These are actions of a tyrant or a dictator, and that's not me. As County Executive, I would open up the inner workings of Jefferson County government. I would tear down that wall. The bottom line is this. I'm a small government conservative. I believe elected officials should be the servants of the people, not their masters. I would put everything I could legally put on the county website so anyone who had any question or interest about anything could find it. I would give every citizen my cell phone number. Because if you got a problem, I got a problem. If I got a problem, we're going to work together to solve it. Thank you. Dennis, I'll, I'll give you five minutes for rebuttal for that. You're okay? Yeah. Okay, and, and 